Hi, welcome to Kelsey Ed, and today we're going to be looking at the Computer Science IGCSE pre-release examination material for 2022 and specifically I'll be looking at the paper 2.2 version. Specifically I like to look at task one of that assignment and then in later videos we'll do task two and also task three. So the items that we want to cover in today's video will be a solution, a programming solution. Don't actually need a pseudocode solution as much because of the nature of question one. So we'll look at how you can set up the programming solution, the declarations and data structures that need to be set into place, how we can display that on screen for the user and then very importantly the potential potential exam questions that you will get. So before beginning in on this video, please make sure that this is the scenario that you are studying. There are different ones for different regions. So please first of all, check which paper you are doing for which zone. This is paper 2.2. It is this specific scenario of a wildlife park. So here is an output from the Python shell output that we're going to look to create today for the programming task one. So this is how you can display it on screen. You can see we've got the different prices for each of the adults and the children depending on whether it's a one or a two day event and some listings of the different costs and the days that are available. So let's take a look at the scenario and what is expected in this programming brief. So first of all we are going to be working for a wildlife park who are looking to set up a booking system and this booking system can consist of one or more tickets for the same day and they can be made up to a week in advance. The booking can be made for one or two consecutive days. You can add extra attractions and the booking will be valid for whichever of the days is chosen. And then they're giving us some details here about the ticket types, the costs and also extra attractions. So what we want to try and do is to break this down into different data types and different data structures. Now we have a really large table here of data and to individually assign each one of these to a variable or a constant would be um, a larger amount of, of processing power, referencing multiple different variables, it's going to become very, very confusing. And so instead, when we see a large data structure like this, the first thing that we should think about is the use of an array. So for each of these, I would be putting an array in place, one for the day one and one for day two. And then depending on the user's input of whether they want to choose day one or two, address this array or address this array. And these, you could also add these into an array. In my solution, I'm actually just going to place these as individual variables. So if we jump to the specific task and setup question and what is required, I'm going to show you how each of those is being displayed on the screen. And then after that, we're going to go and put that into programming. So in order to set up, they want you to display the options for the attractions and the prices for one day tickets, display the options, attractions and prices for two day tickets and display the available days for booking, assuming that there are tickets available for any day. So I've decided to declare all of this at the beginning in one big bulk task. So what you can see here is my arrays actually are iterating through a, lo a loop and then printing out each of the values. These tables are reflected in these prices here. So what it does is I'm going to make a loop and I'm going to iterate through each one of these values in the array and output it. So in the first iteration of the loop it will output the cost of day one for an adult and then the cost of day two. For an adult. Then the next iteration of the loop it will do it for children printing day one and then day two. Senior day one day two you get the picture. Let's have a look at how we can set that up now within Python. Here is an example of setting up the data constructs. I've declared everything here already so take a look at this while we're going through how we'll store each of these items. So we're going to use two different arrays, one for the day cost and one for the two day cost. Um, we will also need to create another array that demonstrates the ticket type. Up here is the ticket type array so we've named it with array at the end so it's easily identifiable and then inside of there we're just listing at each index one item and that will be the description that will be printed out for the user. Now in an array this is position 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. This array has five index positions from 0 to 4 and then here we have our one day array and you can see the values correlating here. So in position 0 
of the day one array is the value for one adult. And that will be replicated again on the two day array. So here we have the amount for a two day cost. So all of our position zeros of our arrays will be adult related. Then position one is child related. So 12, 18, and so on through the senior, the family, and then the group cost. So that's our three different arrays there to store everything in this table. Then for the extra attractions, each of these I've just listed as a variable and put in the value. So we have a lion feeding, a penguin feeding, and an evening barbecue. Each of these I've labeled with the price because we will need to reference later the number of tickets that are required for lions, penguins, and evenings. So identifying by price is giving it a meaningful variable name, which is one of the criterias for the IGCSE. They must have identifiers with meaningful names. Now, the other thing that they ask for in task one, so they display the options for the attractions for one day tickets, display the options for two day tickets. They also want you to show the booking um, for which days are available, but at no point in the program do you actually have to put a user input of any kind. All it says is to display the days available and assume that all the days are valid. So I've just made another array with all the days from Monday to Sunday in order. And that's the first setup of all your data constructs. Next, we need to figure out how we're going to display all of these options. I'm going to run through each line of what I've done to just output the values that are stored inside of here. So a lot of this is just printing on screen to make it appear friendly for the user and display clearly. So in the first line here, we've got just an output to identify that this is the wildlife park booking system. This is just printing a line of stars to separate that first line. Um, and then we're gonna start outputting the actual values from our arrays. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a for loop. Now, the reason that we're using a for loop is because it is a set number of iterations. So we know that inside of our array, we have five different values. Every single one of our arrays has five values. So we know that we are going to iterate through five times. We're going to iterate from the range zero. We're starting at zero because zero will be the first reference point in our array and it goes up until five. Now you might think why isn't it four? But this is running while it's less than five. Think of it like that. It's running while it's less than five. So the for loop says for the variable i and you could give that a different variable name. It could be anything that's memorable for you. In the range from zero up to five, we're gonna iterate through these items. So it's gonna iterate through each item in the array. First of all, I'm gonna reference printing the ticket type array and the index value for that. This first line correlates to this line here and the second line correlates to this one. So these match each other. And each time that you see this printed here, that is another iteration in my loop. And so it iterates five times to print out each one of these values. And if you're not sure what's happening here, I'm just using some text formatting. I've just used a pipe here just to separate out these values. I've made sure to include spaces where required to separate it out. And if you just run your program a few times, you can figure out the sort of formatting that you want to do for that. So basically we got access the ticket type array to position I. When the loop first runs, it's at position zero. So it will reference zero in the array and print one adult and then and in the one day array, it will reference position zero and print out 20. It does the same thing for the second one, referencing adult again from the first position. And then the two day array, it's referencing the 30. And that repeats through all of them. Then I've got this line here, which you'll see will indicate the end of our loop section. After that, we're going to output the cost for additional attractions, lion feeding, penguin feeding, and barbecue. I've just written this all out as text. Um, I think that's absolutely fine. It's just a display at this point in time. And then following that, I've printed out the number of days that are available using the number of days array. And you can just print an array in its entirety. You don't have to iterate through every single value, just print the entire array. Now, you may notice um, a couple of times this is used. 
Um, this is just a line break, so it just allows for the appearance to look a little nicer. For example, if you look here, there's no gap between these two, but here I've put a gap and that actually looks a little nicer. So I can just add in here a backslash N and the next time I run it, it's going to create a space between these two values. So let's run it again and look at that. So it's reprinted it out again and this time we've got a line break between. And that is how to complete task number one within the program. The important part of coming to answer the examination questions for this section will not be your ability to write out this programming as pseudocode. You won't have to demonstrate this at all. Instead, the first question is going to be asking you about this part. It's asking about the setup of the variables. And so you can learn these first variables now, the arrays, the constants, and make sure that you understand which data type. All right, so let's have a look at some of the potential exam questions that you might see in section one. And ordinarily, it is entirely about listing the different variable names, the different array names, and the different constants. So basically all of your data structures. So any variable constants or arrays should have a meaningful name. You should be able to give that name as well as its data type and maybe its use or an example of the values that you would hold inside of there. So a variable name could be the penguin feeding price, its data type would be real because it's a decimal and its use would be to store the price of a ticket price for a penguin. An array name could be day one tickets array and the values that you'd put inside of there, you would just list the prices for day one. So in this, it would be 20, 12, 16, 60, 15, and you would just separate them out with commas. The next common question one would be to do with validations. To complete validations, you want to think about data inputs and the inputs for the user. Once we develop those in task two, then we will address this.